starting off, one of the worst Easter eggs in Call of Duty Zombies is the upgraded shield on Shadows of Evil. Over the years, we've seen a ton of shields and upgraded shield quests added in new maps. For the first ever upgraded shield in Zombies, this was awful. The quest to upgrade the shield felt not only unnatural, but was also really difficult. In order to upgrade the shield, the player must kill 10 or more zombies with 12 consecutive bursts with the rocket shield, essentially recreating what a typical bowling pin strike would be, because every time you kill 10 or more zombies with a burst from the shield, you would hear this sound of bowling pins being knocked over. The reason why this Easter egg is so bad though, is because this has to be done 12 consecutive times in a row. If you fail at any stage to not kill 10 or more zombies within the 12 times you do this, you'll have to start all the way over again. And due to the nature of the shield, you're normally always going to have it on your back to protect you from hits from the zombies. You're never really going to bring it out in front of you. But even when you do, you need to hold down your shoot button to charge up a shield blast, which takes about five seconds or so. And when there's a matter of life and death, you're simply not going to do this. The only benefits you get to this upgraded shield is that it sustains a bit more damage and it has four rocket bursts instead of three. But the effort you have to go to just to make the shield a little bit more durable is not worth it. Therefore, you will never see anyone doing this Easter egg. But if we're talking about long-winded Easter eggs, then this one takes the cake. And this is the golden spork knife on the Black Ops 4 map Blood of the Dead. Not to be confused with the golden spork from Mob of the Dead. This is completely different. And it takes that classic Easter egg reward and dials it up to 11, giving you an infinite melee weapon. However, the steps involved are so long-winded that it'll take you to about round 30 in order to get it. Firstly, you're going to need to get yourself the golden scalpel, which to obtain, you need to get the golden spork, the spectral shield, and the hell's redeemer. So not just the hell's retriever, but then upgrade it to the hell's redeemer. You then need to get 100 kills with the spork anywhere on the map. And within new industries, a bathtub will now be filled with blood and interacting it will raise a skeletal hand taking your spork. You then need to collect three different gemstones around the map, a green stone, a red, and a blue. And then you need to place each of them under three different traps and get 75 kills with each trap to turn the stones into gems. You then need to use your redeemer to get a golden nugget, which is collected from inside the transverse tunnel fast travel by opening up its gate. Once you've got all those items, put them into the furnace at New Industries to create the golden scalpel. But there's still more. You then need to interact with that bathtub and the skeletal hand will take your scalpel. You'll now want to go to the catwalk and bring a warden near the sign and kill him with a melee attack. Return to the tub and interact with it and the skeletal hand will now give you the golden spork knife. Now sure, this is an incredibly powerful weapon as it will insta-kill any enemy type, but it is so complicated and so time consuming that I just don't think it's worth it. And it's a bad easter egg just from how unnecessarily difficult it is. Talking about one of the worst easter eggs, let's talk about one that takes 12 plus hours to complete. And that is the main easter egg on the zombies map classified. Now our main easter egg quest typically involves a lot of steps, involves a lot of the map's mechanics, weapons, map details, and so much more. And whilst they're usually hidden well, there's always some hints towards it. But classified doesn't follow by those rules because the only main easter egg is to simply hit round 150. Now this takes well over 12 plus hours depending on the high round strategy you're using and the only reward that you get is an in-game cinematic cutscene. And don't get me wrong, this cutscene is pretty dang cool. But let's be blunt here, how many players are actually going to go to round 150 on any zombies map, let alone classified? To make matters worse, when the game first released, the game was so unstable that getting to round 150 was nearly impossible. And if at any moment you disconnect from the servers or you lose internet connection, then your game will be over. And for most zombies fans, this is an easter egg that is not worth completing. And one of the worst zombies easter eggs is one that I doubt many of you have done. In the map Beast from Beyond from Infinite Warfare Zombies, there is a really complicated easter egg in order to unlock the Venom X. This iconic weapon from Extinction can actually be upgraded in Zombies. The upgraded version is frankly awful and the easter egg to get it is just as bad. To begin this easter egg, you need to activate a terminal and you must note down a key phrase that's written in Morse code, with the word either being Archer or Cross, which are both Extinction references. You'll then need to repeat this at a different terminal where Morse code will play and the left button is going to play shorts and the right button will play longs. And depending on the key phrase you've got, you'll then need to listen to another Morse code message and follow along to the beeps and listen for the first two letters that follow, which will be Morse code for the numbers 15, 20 or 25, 30 or 18. Once you've got that number, you need to go back to the original terminal and enter that number in Morse code and then get that number of kills with the Venom X on cryptids. Once you've got this to 100%, you can then pack a punch the Venom X and turn it into the Venom Y, which honestly isn't that great. But you can also upgrade this again to the Venom Z. And to do so, you need to go and activate the terminal and input a new Morse code in the computer 
room. After inputting the code, you then need to use the Venom Y to get a number of special enemy kills corresponds to the number that you were given. You then need to go to the terminal near the Pack-a-Punch and set the date to 1950. There'll then be hidden figures around the map that you need to find by heading over to the front of the Pack-a-Punch portal and start shooting them. And you must shoot at least the amount that the Morse code cipher tells the player to shoot within one round, otherwise it results in a failure. And after completion, you can then pack a punch the Venom Y to the Venom Z. And at that point, you'll probably question your sanity if any of that was worth it. Now, over the years, it feels like side Easter eggs have become less and less cool, especially when it comes to the rewards. And this Easter egg will only reward you with a free max ammo. On the Cold War Zombies map D Machina, you first need to reach round 45 and then enter the Dark Ether, where you'll see an order stomping through the forest. If you enter the Dark Ether and stay in the Particle Accelerator room for a grand total of 115 seconds, you will hear stomping above and you must wait until it's stopped. And then once it has stopped, you will go up to the pond and you will find a free max ammo will be there. But don't get me wrong, this Easter egg is cool, but the fact that there are literally ammo caches all around the map for you to get a max ammo at any point, this feels really pointless and is easily one of the worst Easter eggs just because of the reward. But D Machine unfortunately has more than one terrible Easter egg. If you go into the dark ether and you shoot four buttons in the window behind Speed Cola in the medical bay, a massive skeletal hand will appear from one of the doors reaching out to grab something. If you're able to time this right and have the hand grab and kill 15 zombies spawning from this window, you will then receive a free legendary upgrade to your weapon. Now on paper that sounds like a really good Easter egg, but the problem is you have to do this whilst you're in the dark ether only. This is also one of the smallest rooms in the entire map, so it's really easy to go down and die here. Naturally, you wouldn't be sat by this window waiting for a specific moment to then shoot or buttons at the right time to try and grab a zombie. It's just all a bit silly. Much better off just getting your weapon to legendary rarity naturally in game by just getting salvage. But a lot of the side easter eggs in zombies are fun, silly things that just add some cosmetic changes. Now, the trip mine is a pretty boring piece of equipment to use, so being able to change this is exciting, but I'm Unfortunately, this doesn't change its damage in any way. And on the Black Ops 3 map Shadows of Evil, there is an Easter egg that allows you to upgrade the trip mines into two different food items. Now, in order to do this, you simply need to go to either one of the Devilo Donuts food carts or the Holly's Cream Cake food carts, throw down a trip mine and let it go off, killing a zombie. And you need to do that at every one of the food carts on the map. And by doing it by the Devilo Donuts carts, it will change your trip mines into a cream cake of Devilo Donuts, which spread cakes upon its detonation. And upgrading them with the Holly's cream cake food carts turns them into donuts, which spreads donuts upon their detonation. It's a silly little fun thing to do, but for the sake of the trip mines, they're not useful anyway, and upgrading them doesn't improve them in any way. And one of the most long-winded parts of the Zetsubo Noshima map in Black Ops 3 is that you constantly have to fill up a bucket with different colored water in order to open new areas and grow different plants needed for the Easter egg and other various stuff. There is actually an Easter egg to upgrade the bucket to the golden bucket, and this has some pretty amazing amazing benefits, but it's a terrible Easter egg because no one does it because it's just too complicated. So in order to do this, you need to get the skull of Nansapwi and you need to grow each of every plant possible. So a plant with blue water, a plant with green, with purple, and with all types of water. Once all the plants have been grown, a blueprint in the living quarters on the wall with purple water must also be revealed using the mesmerize ability of the skull of Nansapwi. So now reveal a set of vines that could be interacted with using mesmerize revealing a secret plant spot. However, this plant spot will only accept the bucket rather than seeds, and doing so will cause three new planters to be revealed, requiring three standard seeds to be planted in each. And these grow plants that will lure zombies to them and kill them. And these plants each need to kill a sufficient amount of zombies in which they will then return back to the earth, and the bucket plant will then grow into a uniquely shaped plant, which will give you the golden bucket. Now, the golden bucket allows you to have infinite uses of whatever water is stored within it, and if you press both your left and right stick together, it will cycle the water to change the colors between blue, green, purple, so you can manually choose on the fly what color water you need at any point. But it's so long-winded that no one does it, and I'm pretty sure even you watching this video didn't realize this easter egg existed. Now, learning the location of every perk machine within the zombies maps is a huge benefit to planning out your games, but that can all be thrown out the window when Treyarch purposely hide a perk machine from being accessible in the map, and then hiding an Easter egg behind it. And that's the case on the Giant, where you can unlock a sixth secret perk
perk machine. And to unlock this, you just need to throw down a monkey bomb at all three teleporters whilst also using them until this panel on the mainframe changes from red to green. And once you interact with it, it will cause a giant robot head laser to melt snow pile in the corner, revealing either stamina up or deadshot daiquiri. At the time, this was a really cool Easter egg, but I'm putting this as one of the worst because why was a perk machine hidden behind an Easter egg? Just let us have access to it from the very beginning. Now, one of the worst zombies Easter eggs is actually a really recent one that was in Modern Warfare Zombies. There is a fairly convoluted Easter egg involving you taking down four different bosses that are scattered all over the map and interacting with the device that they drop, which will enable you to unlock one of four locks on a door to unlock a secret vault hidden underneath the manor. The reason why this Easter egg is one of the worst is that the reward itself is not worth the hassle. There are a few chests in here which can give you some semi-decent loot, like a free perk. But if you want free perks, then there are Easter eggs to get each and every one. Furthermore, you also have to deal with, with a really beefed up mimic boss that appears as a bit of a jump scare. But in the 10 to 15 minutes it will take you to complete this whole Easter egg, the rewards that you get aren't really worth it. You can get everything found in the vault a lot quicker by just playing the game. But one of the worst Easter eggs in Call of Duty Zombies history also has one of the coolest rewards ever. This Easter egg grants you a free perkaholic, infinite ammo, and free monkey bombs being the homunculus. So with such an insane reward, how is this one of the worst Easter eggs? Well, that's because it was designed to be damn near impossible for any normal human to solve. So this takes place on the map Dead of the Night. And firstly, you're going to need to open all the doors on the map, but you're going to need to write down the order in which you opened each door. But you'll also have to look at six gramophones around the map and you'll need to write down the order in which you looked at each as well. You'll then need to get a pack-a-punch weapon like the trebuchet to then go ahead and destroy six vases in the main hall that all correspond to the doors that you opened in that specific order. And at this point, you can't get any of this wrong or you're going to have to restart the game all over. After you've done that, you'll now need to go to the doors that you opened but in reverse order and there'll be a candle at each location that you'll need to throw a ray fire at. After all of that, you'll need to go to the east stairway and pick up a record vinyl that's on the floor. And you'll now need to put this record in every gramophone that you looked at, but in reverse order. Each gramophone you interact with will play a snippet of the map's music easter egg. And after all this, you've still got one more final step, which is easily one of the hardest. You have to go to the north atrium and stand around until you hear an invisible ghost. And you're going to need to follow this ghost as it takes a very specific route across the entirety of the manor house within this map, purposely going an extremely long way. And the only way that you can tell that you're following the ghost is just by hearing these quiet echoing laughs. And eventually it will take you down to the cellar in the map and you'll then need to prone and crawl in this route all the way until you get to this barrel in the cellar. If you stand up, the ghost won't move. And when you get to the end of the cellar, you'll see the this jump scare from the ghost and upon that appearing you'll then be granted with the perkaholic of six perks the homunculus as well as infinite ammo for the weapon that you had on you when you were completing the easter egg undeniably the best easter egg reward ever but the steps involved make this one of the worst easter eggs of all time now there are some really pointless easter eggs in call of duty zombies and mawada totem has one of them after turning on the power there will be a new object on the apartment rooftop and when you interact with with it, several moving targets are going to appear in the background with you having to shoot them all in a limited time. You can't miss any of these targets and you have to shoot all of them before the timer runs out. This can also only be attempted once per game. So if you fail, you can't retry this Easter egg unless you start up another game. Now you are going to need to have a sniper in order to complete this Easter egg. And once you have shot all of the moving targets before the time runs out, you'll be awarded with an EFA tool. Now this EFA tool is a legendary tool so it will upgrade your weapon to the highest rarity which is definitely decent considering that you can do this easter egg fairly early on but it's just so difficult to really notice these targets unless you've watched a video prior to trying this and whilst it gives me influences from buried shop shooter easter egg step i just feel like it's just not worth doing because if you fail it once you can't do it again now we all love the ray gun mark ii it's one of the best wonder weapons in zombies history so when tryout 
reintroduced them in Black Ops 4's Alpha Omega map, we were all extremely excited. And for the first time, we were able to upgrade these beyond typical Pack-A-Punch to have elemental ray gun Mark IIs. There are four unique upgrades, but the quests involved to actually upgrade them are pretty boring. Some of them you absolutely need to have throwable grenades in order to complete. If you spawned in with a particular piece of equipment that can't be used like a grenade, then you're out of luck and you can't do this. But for such an OG popular wonder weapon, the fact that the actual quest itself is so mundane and boring and the actual upgraded variants themselves are also really mid. It is such a wasted opportunity for them to really make these iconic wonder weapons like the elemental bows on Derizon Drag or the elemental staffs on Origins. And when the OG Mark II is better than all of its four upgraded variants, that's when you know there is a problem. And so that's why it's easily one of the worst Easter eggs in Zombies. Absolutely no one knows that this next Easter egg exists because this is a pointless one in the Black Ops 3 Zombies map Gorod Krovi. One of the cooler new additions in the map is a wonder a weapon called the Dragon Strike, which allows you to call in a dragon to fire at while zombies alert to location of the attack. But there is a way to upgrade this to the Draconite controller, allowing it to do more damage and have a larger radius than its normal version. It can be called twice and it has green flames instead of red. Now, the reason why this is one of the worst Easter eggs is because it is absolutely pointless. Outside of using the Dragon Strike during the main Easter egg quest, you never really ever use it. But to upgrade it, you need to kill 40 zombies with the dragon strike and then using the dragon strike you need to mark a number of different red iron cross flags that are outside of the map on solo out of the four possible flags there will only be one remaining that you need to mark but in co-op each flag will need to be marked once by any player once that's done you need to return to the hatchery and interact with the crystal to go through the lockdown that you normally would have done to get the dragon strike this time you need to complete the lockdown using the dragon strike during each wave to kill as many zombies as you possibly can and once this is complete, going upstairs to the machine where you originally got the strike from will now give you the Draconite controller. To me, there's just a lot of convoluted stuff involved when it's not necessary and the Dragon Strike doesn't need to be any stronger than it already is, in my opinion. Hence why not a single person does this Easter egg. Now, sometimes zombie Easter egg quests like to have a lot of spawn points for certain items. One of the worst Easter eggs can be found in Zombies in Spaceland where there is a secret music Easter egg that plays the original modern Warfare 2 theme. Usually there's an item that's in three different spots and once you interact with them all the song will play. But in Zombies in Spaceland they made this a little bit different because there are five total teddy bears that you need to find and shoot but there are a hundred plus locations for these. That is an ungodly amount of different spawn locations to memorize and learn just to activate a music easter egg. What makes this even worse is that this is tied to an achievement or trophy two hidden songs in this map. The other easter egg for the other song is nowhere near as difficult as this and I don't agree that the design of an easter egg is good solely by its difficulty when there's this many spawn locations. Do you agree or do you disagree with that? Let me know below. But this might be the worst easter egg in all of Call of Duty Zombies and this award goes to Cold War's Firebase Z. On that map there is a traversal system where you can use jump pads to jump from one area of the map to another for 500 points. However there is a really common convoluted pointless easter egg that allows you to use these jump pads for the rest of the game for absolutely free in order to do so you're firstly going to need to want to spend 500 points to use the jump pad once to go to anywhere on the map then you want to head to one of the six jump pad locations and look for a small green light that appears on its display you want to stand on the jump pad and then shoot that green light once you've done that, a countdown timer is going to appear on the pad followed by a directional arrow. This arrow represents movements that you need to make whilst you're standing on the jump pad. There are five movements for each pad, totaling at 30 moves that need to be done without messing up once. Once you've completed the moves for that jump pad, it will launch you to another area of the map where you need to find another jump pad and repeat that process six total times. It's a bit like a Dance Dance Revolution Easter egg and the reward is that the jump pads will now 
be free. But this is such a pain with so much effort involved that it is completely pointless to do and the jump pads are never really used in the map anyway. So it might go down in history as the most pointless easter egg and one of the worst in the process. And Black Ops 4 Zombies reintroduced the upgraded shield mechanic, creating unique shield upgrades for each map. But the shield upgrade on the Zombies map 9 will go down as one of the longest easter egg hunts of all time with one of the most pointless shield upgrades in Zombies history. So you're first going to need to get the shield of course which is the brazen ball and requires three parts just like the normal shield. The first part is by shooting three metal ball heads with the brazen ball at the top of the Zeus tower. Once you've done that you need to head down to pack a punch and look up at the dome and once you find the part you need to shoot it with any gun so it can fall down and you can pick it up. In order to get the second part is one of the most tedious activities I've heard in all of zombies. There is a very specific set of requirements you need to follow all without the shield breaking or you have to start the whole process over. So the first step is to get eight melee kills with the shield it can't be any more it can't be any less it has to be eight after that you then need to get a melee kill with the shield on either a gladiator a brawler or a catalyst this will then ignite a fire at the end of the shield and you'll then need to get melee kills with the shield until the fire goes out once that's done you need to repeat all of those steps three more times and upon completion a headless statue near the odin zeus temple will have the second part and for the third part you need to have the shield on fire again again but you now need to melee kill a tiger a brawler and a gladiator also without the fire going out on the shield it's at this point i'm questioning who in their right mind would even do this but once you've completed all that head to the fallen hero and you'll find the third part above that you need to shoot down and collect and with all three parts you can take it to the workbench where you built the shield and you'll now be able to get the iron ball it doesn't seem to be any better than the original shield and it is just such a long-winded easter egg to do with no real benefit that no one's going to do it now now, we all love Mega Gobblegums inside of Black Ops 3 Zombies, and at this point, who doesn't have some lying around? The Darius Drak allows you to actually get a free random Mega Gobblegum, but I'm labeling it as one of the worst Easter eggs because it just requires a lot more effort than it's worth. To begin this, you need to take a plant that's going to be near the teleporter in the Undercroft, and you'll now need to travel back in time, which in order to do so, you'll need to acquire one of the upgraded bows, and then complete the first two steps of the main Easter egg quest, where you go around shooting the wisps in order to activate the teleporter to take you back in time which is already pretty long-winded if you weren't doing the main easter egg now that you're back in time you simply need to place the plant down on the toolbox where you originally found it and when you're back to the main map the plant will have grown into a larger plant giving you a free random mega gobble gum now, this easter egg also does exist on shadows of evil but i feel it's just nowhere near as long-winded on that map as you only need the perk widow's wine in order to complete that egg but there have been a lot of incredible easter egg quests over the years in zombies but there's also been the fair share of terrible ones and the absolute worst Treyarch zombies easter egg has to be the transit main quest and to make matters worse there are two different versions of this easter egg that you can do but both of them are just as bad as the other where one side requires you to get emp grenades out of the mystery box which could take a lot of time acquiring points to spin the box another side also requires you to build the jet gun and then purposely destroy it as if using the jet gun wasn't bad enough it just feels like a really rushed quest where Treyarch didn't really know what to do. There isn't a single moment in the easter egg which is memorable, there are no cool moments, even the ending is underwhelming where a tower just lights up. You aren't given any rewards at all aside from one side that randomly gives you some power up drops every so often. You don't get any free perks, you don't get any free wonder weapons, nothing like that. And I think it's ironic given how bad of a zombies map transit is to a lot of people. But one of the most pointless easter eggs in Call of Duty Zombies history lies within the zombies in space land map from infinite warfare the map is filled with incredible weapons and wonder weapons but on top of that there is a system where you can upgrade any standard weapon to have an elemental version through an item called the arcane core but there is a way to upgrade the arcane core to an item called the exquisite which can be attached to any weapon except melee weapons launchers and wonder weapons giving you more ammo increasing your rate of fire reducing your recoil enabling your shots to bounce off walls and give a poison effect to your 
your bullets. So on paper, this sounds great, but ultimately this is so pointless and there's so many better weapons available for you straight away that you don't need to do this. So to obtain the exquisite, you need to buy golden teeth at the arcade prize. You then need to open pack a punch and let the UFOs fly around the map. You need to complete any of the elemental cores, which is what enables you to use the arcane core on any weapon to turn it into an elemental weapon. But you'll then need to wait for a brute to spawn and lead him towards the crocodile trap and let the crocodile's mouth close once the brute is inside. His teeth will break and you'll be able to replace them with the golden teeth and this will reveal a cabinet inside of the crocodile's mouth. The cabinet will reveal four slots, one for each element. You need to shoot the slot that corresponds to the element that you've got on your weapon and it will drop a crystal that you need to take into the pack-a-punch room. Place this where you've got the crystal and this will place the crystal in the cabinet and you now need to repeat this for all the remaining elemental versions of the arcane core. So this is already a lot of effort that you need to do and once you've put in the final element, a pink element will fly out the pack-a-punch room and reach the crocodile's mouth and in there you'll be able to equip that to your weapon. Outside of doing this to get the trophies for the map, this is something that you will never ever do in a game. And whilst it's a really cool reward for players, it is just so obnoxiously long-winded that you're never going to do this in a game.